All right, what's going on? This is Alex DF doing Advent of Code Day 22. Got what is called a reactor reboot with a relatively simple start in these. Basically, I've got my puzzle input look kind of like this, where each one is going to give me a direction on or off. It's going to give me um, y, a y, x, y, and z ranges. Uh, and I'm going to basically walk through. So like this means there's a cube that runs from negative 20 to 26, negative 36 to 17, 47 to 7, uh, right there, oh, negative 47 to 7. Um, and every, every pixel in that cube is going to turn on. So I'm going to turn a bunch on, then, I'm going to, then I can go through and turn everything in this cube off. Now, if some of those will already be off, um, everything starts to fault off. Um, but if anything overlaps with any of the other cubes, they're going to go off. Um, then on, then off, and et cetera, it's like at the end. Um, but part one, I am ignoring anything that is outside the region negative 50 to 50 on all three axes, um, which basically means these last two lines I can ignore. So let's uh, dive in. Uh, all right. So day 22, I got a nice stub here. Um, we're going to read in all the lines. Um, so I, I suspect part one is, part two is going to be different. Um, in fact, let's take a look real quick. Um, what does our puzzle input look like? Um, the word count at is 400 lines. So it's, there's definitely some in there. Um, and it looks like a lot of them are really big. So we're going to ignore most of these for part one. I'm guessing part two is going to be just, okay, now do it again, but ex you know, handle those. Um, uh, let's handle, I don't think, I think we're going to have to come up with a new way to do it, but I don't exactly know what that way is yet. So for now, we're going to work off of, um, off of just how uh, the, um, and we're going to work off of, a brute force way of looking at this. So we're going to say uh, for line and lines, we're going to step over each line. We're going to get, see, we split it on status, comma, boards equal line dot split. Split it. And then, see. We're going to go ahead and set up a C equal set, track that, and we will do, go ahead and we can do this with a reg, reg, reg X this time. C. Now we can simply do and do um, 0x1, 0 y0, zero, y1. C zero C one equals boards dot hurry dot find all. What are we looking for? We're looking for um, be a negative. That's a question mark means zero or one. Then uh, backslash D plus one or more of that. That'll be it. I think that'll work. We print. Uh, have this whole back status comma. That should write a lot of stuff. Python three day twenty two twenty two example. Environments. Uh, it would help if I pass in that. Cool. And so it looks like we're getting. Um, what we want here. So uh, we basically have a series of X's and Y's. Now what we can do is we can do, um, I guess we'll, uh, I don't know, the practical best way to, before, let's do X0 equals min, no, equals max, X0 comma minus 50. So basically, if, if the x0 is actually way outside of our bounds, we're just going to ignore all that stuff for now and scoot into where it's 50. We can do x1 equals min 1 comma 50. We're going to need 2 yank yank paste paste. 
that, and then this just changes to y1 or y0, y1. Z zero Z one. So what's going to happen here is if it's like way outside of the bounds either way, then it's just um, going to end up going zero. It's going to end up going from. So let's say like we had something that was. Uh, let's say we have this row right here, the bottom row. Uh, so when we get here, x zero is going to be something giant. But when we pick the max, it's going to become negative fifty, and pick x one. Um, oh, I want to touch be positive 50 and what if we're doing it off, off of here? We do that. Okay, let's try it again. Um, so now if I pick the maximum value of zero to be 50, okay, so it's very negative. Um, and if I pick, if, if x zero is Greater than 50, so we'll pick it. Yeah, it's going to pick it just fine, but then I think that'll work. Um, here, we'll try this. Run, let's just run it and see what happens. Oh. List, map, and um, oh, that. So that's clearly not right. Um, I thought this was going to work. Let's see if I convince myself out of what was actually going to work. Um, yeah, this is this looks good because basically what's going to happen is you see none of none of the um, none of the ones at the top here are changed. There's a couple here minus fifty and a fifty. Uh, that looks like probably already there. There's a minus 50. Oh, no, I see. I screwed something up up here. Um, XX, this should be Y, Y, and Z, Z. And that looks better. See a 50 put in here. Probably already there, and then otherwise, you have a couple 50s in here. The first off, maybe this 50s were already there. So I think I think we're basically in good shape here. Um, the basic idea of this: if the minimum is outside of negative, is less than negative 50, we just jump up to negative. If the maximum is more than 50, we come down to 50. So that's how we half that. Um, when we get these rows down here, this we're going to loop over this. And we're going to go from negative 50 to negative 39,000, which will just never enter the loop. It will be good. So I think that's pretty good there. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to say, still in the same loop, we will say uh, 4x in range x0 comma x plus 1 or y in range y0 plus 1 for z in range z0 comma z plus 1. So we're basically looping over all those ranges. Then we're going to say g dot add x, y. Think print part 1. Then Feels way too simple for day 22, but let's try. It's not super fast. Let's see, 603799. No, we did not get it right. Um, first one, does this example now? Have... Oh. Oh, because we are not taking into account off and on. We're just adding. Okay, so here's what we do. Uh, if that is, I believe I called it, equals on that. Else, e dot 
Python set. Uh, remove. See, try that. Uh, you can't remove item that doesn't that. No. Like discard or pop. If it's in there, so discard. All right, let's try that. Just how slow that is, scary to me. Just given how how much I know step two is coming. Um, let's see. Well, five ninety seven eighty four, five Now I am traveling, and so I'm running this in like a pretty underpowered VM. Um, so it might be slow, um, but okay. On to step two. Um, now we're going to run all the steps, and this time we're going to on all the steps. So in this case, I'm going to have, wow, okay, that's, uh, there's 100,000, there's a step, of, there's a billions, there's a trillion, so 2,000 trillion, I forget what comes after trillion, um, that's a lot. And so we're clearly not going to be able to just do our loop over all the steps. To... So, interesting, let's see. Um, I'll be honest, I'm going to have to pause this and think for a little while. Thinking, this is not something where I can think online. I'm going to have to go do some research about how to handle this, how to handle this kind of problem. Um, so, uh, yeah, pausing and we'll come back later. All right, so uh, I went down a road. I, I did, did some research about strategies for how to handle this kind of problem. Um, I went down a road trying to do a thing called coordinate compression. And the idea there is, a real quick idea, is I don't actually care about um, all the X's. And so what I can do with coordinate compression is, you know, I can break my, I can take the places where transitions happen. So like if I had like a really simple scenario where I had like this box, this box, this box, let's just say that was it. Um, basically what I can do then is I can say, well, what I care about is this, so that's not quite on place right there. There, the only y coordinates I care about are that, that, and apologies, these should all be straight vertical or very um, straight lines, but they're not that, et cetera. And I can break it down into a grid like this, where they're unevenly spaced, but they are, um, you know, but there's much fewer of them, right? And all I care about is these transition points. And so then when I loop over my things, I just have to loop through, for each one, I just have to kind of go through, I guess I should do the vertical ones too. Um, and again, this would be 3D space, not 2D space, but I'm just showing you 2D space as an example. Um, there. Um, so now for every, uh, pretend, these, well, pretend these other ones are here too. Um, well, I'll just do them, I guess, real quick. Uh, and like this, and so now I just need to check each of these spaces. And so instead of, this could be a million wide, but I only have to check once I can, I know everything in this, everything in there is the same. So I just, I would take all my X's, all my, all my starts, all my ends plus one and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I did this and I ended up with like a grid of, um, I think it was a few hundred and it still was taking um, hours to run through. And I don't know if that's because I'm running in this you know, VM on my laptop because I'm traveling or if um, it's just slow in general, uh, but it wasn't working for me here. Um, so I'm abandoning, I'm abandoning that entirely. I'm not going to make you watch me struggle with it for an hour. Um, but there's a summary of what I tried there. Um, now I'm going to move on to a more interesting one. I think, I think actually makes it simpler. Although it's a little harder to understand up front, which is why I didn't go for it. Um, the inclusion exclusion principle. And the basic idea here is um, if I want to count like the area of these three circles, what you do is you, you, you can, you could start or just take two circles, A and B. Well, 
I could add the area of A and the area of B, but then I have this overlap area, which is kind of twice. So I subtract that off and I get the result. Um, similarly with three circles, I could add A, B, and C together and then subtract off where B and C are together and where A and C are together and where A and B are together. Um, and that works, except for now I've sub actually subtracted. So I've, this part in here got counted three times, once is A, B, and C, and it got subtracted three times in each of the pairs. So it actually gets added back in. Um, and if you look at that, that's what they have here. So you have A plus B plus C minus A, B, A, C, and B, C, and then you add back in the middle part. Um, somewhere down here, it actually shows that it scales um, that basically you're going to add these in where you're going to just alternate, you know, to the J, to the J basically just means you're going to be alternating, adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting. So if you had a fourth one, um, you would add back, you'd add all the, you'd, you'd add all the singles, you'd subtract all the doubles, you'd add back in the triples, you'd subtract out the quadruples, et cetera. Um, and so what this does means for us is we can start with our, we can loop through our squares one by one. Um, start with just the volume of the first square or cube, and then the second cube is an, might have some overlap. So we will add the first, we'll add the entire second one to it, and then we'll subtract off where they overlap. And then the third one, we'll add the entire thing to it and then subtract off the overlaps. But if there's a third, you know, it, it, there might be a, you know, so there might be a third, an open place where they all three overlap. And so what we'll do actually is over, we will keep track of each cube and each overlap. And so if you overlap with an overlap, then we have to do something else. Um, and that, when you put that together, it gets kind of clever and you can make it all work out. Okay, so first let's go in here and uh, comment this out because we're not using it. Ooh. Try that again. Get rid of that. Um, so the first thing we need is a function that's gonna we're gonna call um, f it take two c one c one c two and it's gonna take two cubes. Um, we're gonna say a c is going to be equal to uh, x zero x one y comma y zero y one z zero z one. Uh, and so it's, this will be worth visualizing just to make sure we get it right. Um, we've got two squares like this. Um, I guess first we should deal with the case where there's no overlap. Start with this. This square. It doesn't matter that they overlap in, in y. They don't overlap in, if they don't overlap in any of the coordinates. Then we don't care. So um, what we want to do is see if the high one of one is lower than the low of the other. Um, and if that's true for either case, we're done. Right, so we'll do um, four R one R one two in zip C one C two. So we're gonna take take that. We're gonna take those things together. So R one two. There's our nice. There's our basic list comprehension that doesn't actually do anything but add the two. Um, now, what do we want to do? So we want to say R1, the low bound, is greater than R2, the high bound, or R1, R2, low bound, greater than R1, high bound. So that's the check. We want to check if any of those that say if any of those turn overlap. So if in any if, if in any dimension the low and the high, you know, we don't overlap, we don't overlap, we return to overlap. Um, otherwise, we're going to return, we're gonna do the same things. We're gonna do uh, R1, R2 for R1, comma R2 in zip C1, C2. We're putting together the x's, the, the x pairs, the y pairs, and the z pairs. Um, and then for this, we're going to say, what we're going to do is we're going to, for each coordinate system, we're going to do, um, so in the case where we are, oh, we are overlapping, uh, we want to get the, this is one and this is two, then the low bound here is going to be the minimum 
um, you know, it's going to be the larger of the two minimums, and it's going to be the lower of the two maximums. So it'll be max r one zero comma two zero zero and making this hard. And then the next coordinate will be min r one one comma r two. Tuple like that. Make this whole thing a tuple. Use it easily for keys and things, and we will return it. Um, I think that'll work. We can check it, I guess. Um, let's see, let's come down here and do Python 3 minus i, day 22, 22 example 2, but there was an updated example there. Um, so if we want to do git overlap, and let's just make up some points here. So that'd be point 1, that'd be point 2. Point one has that in three points in it. Points in it. So the first point goes from zero comma five, zero comma five, zero comma two. This one goes from one comma from one to six, from one to six, one to six. Get back something that goes. Yeah, that looks good. I think we start at one in all cases. And we get to yeah, sweet. Um, if we did something like um, if this last one, we changed it so that it went from four to six. We get no overlap because now we don't overlap in the V coordinate. That looks good. Um, now see, we're going to need to steal a little bit of this. Three yank yank. Insert four line in lines. Uh, we're going to need to make a to make cubes equals, and I'm actually going to use a default dict I think here to allow me to um, start with zero, add and subtract to it, and as well as easily copy it for, for another one. So um, I've already got them imported up here. Uh, so we'll let's say we'll go ahead and say like. C for cube is equal to, and let's, let's get it in the structure that I was using above there. That, 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 be x0, x1, y0, y1, z0, z. Now I've got my cube how I want it. Um, next thing I need to do is get any overlaps. So I'll do four, let's, let's call this um, C new. 4C in cube. Um, now, in this case, at the beginning, there's not going to be any, but that's okay. Um, we'll do overlap equals git overlap. C new C. If overlap, it returns something. Then, we're going to put it into, and this is where we're going to need, um, don't want to mess with don't want to mess with cubes while we're editing cubes. So we'll do like new cubes equals default dict int. And we can say new cubes equals uh, plus equals. So when there's an overlap, the value is going to be the negative of the value of the, of the thing I'm overlapping with. If that makes any sense. Um, so I'll have cubes sub C, and then I'll, I'll, I'll sub, uh, put a negative one. Oh, actually, I can just adding a negative is subtracting like that. Um, then I will also want to add new cubes sub C new. Ah, OK, so, so this whole step right here is just getting rid of, is, is removing the extra overlaps, right? So getting, finding places where there's extra overlaps and compensating for the fact that we're counting twice. Um, if we're turning the switch thing off, that's all we need to do. We just need to take everything that's overlapping and turn it off. Um, but in the case where we're finding where things are turning on, so if uh, status equals on, now we want to um, add the entire thing back in. So new cubes of the new 
new equals one. And then because we're at the end of our loop, for the end of our line, we'll do for uh, e in the new cubes cubes sub c plus equals I think that sounds don't let's think but I add that in um I think that's right yeah add in any additional new overlaps we have so that would be new cubes sub c Let's run that and see what it looks like. Unsupported by hint. Huh. Where is that? New cube. Oh, it's not because it needs to be new cube sub overlap. That. Cubes look like it. Okay, it's a bunch of stuff, cubes.values. How does that look? All zeros, negative ones, and ones. That's what I wanted to see. Um, when cubes, that's, I have no idea if that's right or not. Um, okay, let's, 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 for, let's go forward now. Um, so let's pretend that's all our cubes, all our overlaps, all our double, triple overlaps, et cetera. Now we just need to go through and find the volume of each cube multiplied by the factor we saved here. We'll say total equals zero. Uh, 4C in cubes, the volume is going to be um, for X in, in C. So now C is going to have, C is a tuple that has three items. Each item has two, has the start and the end. Um, so we'll, I'm going to call these R, that's what we're calling them, um, for R and C. So it gives us the three, that gives us the, the three pairs. Um, or that gives us each of the three pairs. And for each of them, we want to do R sub one minus R sub zero plus one because we're including the edge points. So now for each each thing in cubes, we now have for each cube, we now have the three three dimension sizes. Um, and so now we want to multiply those three sides together to get an area. We'll do math dot prod around that. And then we need to multiply that times cubes sub c to get the plus minus etc. And we can do total plus equals that. And I have no idea if this is going to work, but we might as well uh, get put ourselves in place for success. Total. Two seven five eight ends in two two three five. Let's see, two seven five eight ends. In... Awesome. Let's go and try the puzzle input. Get it? No. Too high. Oh, okay. Let's go back here and look for. If we're going to get a coordinate, we're going to get the create a new cubes list. We're going to loop over all the existing cubes. We're going to get the overlap with the new cube. We're going to any overlaps. We're going to subtract. We're going to put the sign based on the sign of the overlap itself. If that well, that's certainly not right. If status equals, well, this should be plus equals. So that might be our problem. Um, Gonna, because if we had two of the exact same cube in our input, for example, we want we wouldn't set it to one. We'd add one. Um, all right, let's, that that looks right. Let's see. Um, that's a different number. If we can get it yet. One second. Okay, I can check that. And we are good. We're back to good. We're back to good there. That's awesome. Okay. Um, this is a really challenging problem. Um, I would never have been able to solve this without a lot of research. Um, so <laughs> you watched me fumble a little bit, but really, um, I, this was this problem was a beat. So we can let's see. Come here. Let's do a quick review. 
on comment this. It's interesting because the first part actually um, seems fast. It takes longer than the second part. Um, even the second part's much bigger. Watch this. You know, well maybe not. That, but they're both. They're both. Okay, I take that back. But they're both. You know, pretty fast. So um, in the first one, we just loop over all of our all of our our grid basically, and uh, as long as it's within the range of 50 to negative 50, we add it or discard it based on whether that's what we're doing. And then we just sum up our length and that's easy. Um, but then it gets way too big. And so we use this inclusion exclusion principle, really cool use here. And basically just keep keep collecting overlap cubes with a, with a sign and then uh, eventually sum it all up with the, based on their volume. Um, it's been, this has been a long one for me. It's probably not, not gonna be totally reflected in the video, but uh, I'm gonna call it here. Um, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next time.